what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. It's that time again. It is time for the Deck Mastery Series, and we are moving on from Mega Knight decks. We are moving on to Graveyard. Juicy J, what's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing great, man. How about you? I'm doing well. Congratulations on being partnered with YouTube, man. Seriously, that's a really uh, huge accomplishment for you. Yeah, I'm really excited. I'm going to be posting a video right after this. I'm excited to see where the channel can go. Heck yeah, guys, go ahead and follow Juicy J. Subscribe to his channel using the show notes, or the link will be in the show notes below. Uh, today, we're going to learn Graveyard. Uh, maybe a two-part series, maybe a three-part. We haven't decided yet. But uh, what deck are we going to be playing today? Yeah, this is the OG Splash Art. It's spinning like every single meta in the past like six metas. Very consistent, very, very fun no, deck. Yeah, no better what place to start, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, well, it's not OG OG because you have the goblin barrel in it, right? I mean, the goblin uh, cage. Goblin barrel? Come on, bro. I mean, yeah. So, like, the original version has the bomb tower, but bomb tower a little bit nerfed. You can still use the bomb tower version, but I think we're going to go with a cage today. I really like the cage. It's very, very solid, especially against stuff like Royal Giant. Didn't the original, original version, though, have, like, bowler? Well, we did the video on, like, three years ago, like, the first video I ever did with you. Yeah, you was, did. Like, that was the first video ever on my channel. Yeah. You know how it is, man. You, like, pick up one deck archetype and you're able to push just higher consistently and then you switch to something else and you drop a couple hundred trophies you switch back to your comfort zone you gain a couple hundred trophies and that's how i am with graveyard so i want to identify what the hell i'm doing wrong here so uh why don't you start with the live match first though you're on top ladder i'm in uh noobsville over here is there any a baby fan he's really good is there any part of you in this matchup at all that is looking for graveyard opportunities in single extra time or are you just focusing on defending unless like something crazy happens yeah, so mainly, like, unless something crazy happens, like you said, mainly I'm just looking to play purely defensively um, in single elixir time. Uh, unless you have just an amazing defense that you can counter push really well off and you know your opponent's super low on elixir. And you also, like, know their deck and all, everything. But, yeah, like you said, mainly just looking for uh, so defensive plays like this. Just um, mm -hmm. uh, basically just trying to figure out what deck he's got. And, yeah. Uh, standard stuff as well as... Um, everything like that, but we are gonna go with an aggressive one okay. right now because of the fact that uh, he spent a lot of elixir as well as um, I kind of know what deck I'm going against, so I can just kind of kill everything in this counter push. Is not poison, really yeah. Well, kinda that was good. Is. That's the thing yeah. I struggle with the most, Juicy, honestly, is like when to graveyard, I guess. I mean, like, not to sound so basic about it, but like. I, yeah, especially with Tornado, like with this Splash Shard deck, it's all about defense first and then counter push second. Uh, if you yeah, can, but like, like you tornadoed really there, and I would have probably not tornado. I mean, I'm sorry, you uh, you graveyarded there, that first graveyard, and I probably wouldn't have just because like it's drilled in my head not to, you know, in single laser time, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I just think uh, I just noticed that I had a very solid defense. Yeah, and then I also noticed um, like D. what deck he was playing. As well as, uh, like, I knew, like, we were probably even in Elixir, as well as I had some troops on, on the board. And the same thing here, like, he's not really playing a whole lot of units, and I'm just going to go with a uh, poison on the Magic Archer almost always. Okay. And then this is just amazing, like, the amount of damage we're going to be able to get. Once again, just a Barb Barrel here. Yeah. Ray Brian takes these out. And it's a pretty, like, standard solid deck. Like, this is one of my favorite decks because I feel like it's one of those decks that if you play perfect, you can win almost any matchup. Like, there's not... Like, there's obviously hard counters, but if you play perfect, like, you can beat those with just really solid defensive play as well as um, really good, uh, like, creative and react... Like, do you ever basically. use... Do you ever use defensive graveyards with this deck? Like, against Pekka yeah. or something? There's one instance where I would use a defensive graveyard, and that is versus Sparky. Sparky, Sparky. It can be very okay. difficult to defend. It's really important to use defensive graveyards because that's going to allow you to really uh, just distract the Sparky as well uh, and as well as um, you know do damage to him. And then you're going to be able to go in with um, like some more defensive stuff versus like the giant or the goblin giant that you might have. Okay. So let's go Barb Barrel here. He's getting some solid chip damage with the Magic Archer. Yeah, he is. Uh, hopefully take this out. No, we don't. So I'm going to have to Baby Dragon on the Magic Archer just to be careful so it doesn't lock on my tower through the night. And then I can finally activate King Tower here. Nice. Get a very valuable poison first off. And then go with a Graveyard, I think, as soon as I have enough Elixir. Graveyard a little bit early. Would have liked the Knight to tank. But, you know, he doesn't have, like, a whole lot of really good counter to cycle. He's going to cycle back, but... Overall, I think that Graveyard was pretty bad, but honestly, the way that we've played so far, I don't think it's going to be an issue. Yeah, I was actually going to say, not that it was a bad Graveyard, but like, 
do graveyard with ooh nice nato yeah. though you were ready you were ready yeah All right. Do you graveyard without a tank like that very often? Because at night, even if he was in range, he would only have like, you know, a third health or so. Yeah, so like there's very specific times where I would go with a uh, naked graveyard, but it, yeah. it's very matchup based, which is why I'm really excited to go like over this deck. It's one of my, yeah, uh, it's like one of my best decks. And like, especially mm. versus, for example, for I'm gonna predict a magic archer right here. He doesn't magic archer, but it's fine because triple X is gonna come in and I can just graveyard. Um, sorry, but let me stay back on. Nah, just back. why don't you yeah finish this match first? <laughs> You'll have plenty of opportunity to correct my mistakes in just a second here. So, GGs, yeah, man. Basically, whenever uh, like the only like the main deck I will play a naked graveyard against is log bait. Log bait. Um, you can't really build up a big push because they have an inferno tower, as well as uh, they can get like rocket cycle value for play stuff in the back. So that's why I go naked graveyards versus log bait. That's pretty much the only deck. Okay, sounds good, man. Well, here I go. Ready? You ready to coach yep. me? Trickster7 is the opponent. We have Tornado, Poison, uh, Goblin Cage, and uh, Graveyard is our starting hand. So just chill. Yeah, so I, you could just chill and then uh, react to this. You don't really have the best counter, but you'll have to go with something. So in that situation, like there's definitely some certain tornado placements, but you can activate King Tower there by basically placing it on that little rock that's next to your King Tower, kind of like on that little carpet area. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if I could do it in the safe spot or whatever, but now I know. Yeah, this is actually a fun fact. Like, so even if they place it in the safest spot possible, you, you can, can still activate. activate King Tower. You'll just take a little bit more of extra hits, basically. Okay. So right now, Dice isn't back, if you have it. Okay, a little bit I... too far forward in my opinion, but you, sh I, you should I be fine. I think your opinion is correct. You can just go with a knight yep. to protect it, and then bar uh, barrel. probably bar barrel, yeah. And you should be chilling. Alright, so trying to think about, like, at this point in the game, you're trying to think about what your Mahon has, you can definitely poison that musketeer. Yep. So he's got, like, a Mega Knight bait kind of deck. It's, it's all going to be about a really solid defense, and then kind of pushing off of those Mega Knights. Maybe trying to activate King. What did I do? They didn't. Pretty solid placement. Just, well, I think one, one more down from there is the perfect placement. Okay. So now but. that I have it activated, when he Goblin Barrels, should I just pull towards, like, the back tile? Or is the front? Does it not really matter? Uh, Yeah, so from here now, I would just try and use Bar Barrel, uh, if you can, versus the Goblin Barrels. And okay. then trying to use Cage versus, or, or Baby Dragon versus, like, the Skeleton Barrels. Okay. Um, but yeah, if you ever get out cycled, you can definitely just pull backwards on those annoying goblin barrels. You might have to use barbaro here. So. I'm gonna use a uh, NATO. Uh, okay, not bad okay. at all. I guess I didn't need to do it, but whatever. So I have graveyard. I'm just like I'm just gonna poison, I guess. But like, yeah. should I? Uh, so when should I be thinking about graveyard here? Like after the next defense? Yeah, after the next defense, just have a really solid defense, and then I think you can get a nice graveyard down. Okay, but yeah, I shouldn't do it off this, should I? No, no, I just like ice uh, was in back. Okay. Yeah, I, this is fine. You can just yeah. ice was in back. Yeah. And then, you, yeah, so like right now he's kind of confused. He doesn't know what to do. You keep playing passive. And then, like, he's leaking so much right now. Like, he doesn't know what to do. So, yeah, now you could just, like, knight. Mm -hmm. Yep. And just keep going like this. Big dragon back if you have it. Uh, I got nothing. I'm going to have to leak now. I got nothing at all. Oh, I don't know. I'll do this, I guess. That works, that works. Okay, he's got poison, you realize that now? Yeah. So yeah, so, when you get in that awkward cycle... I was super example, awkward, yeah, yeah. For example, I would just go with like a tornado onto his Mega Knight to just pull it into your Knight so it doesn't jump or something. Like, that's the other thing with this deck, you definitely have to get really creative with tornadoes sometimes. Okay. Okay, but you got this, just get this defense and then you can definitely go with a Graveyard. Maybe like Knight or something onto okay. the Musketeer. Yep. Per perfect. Then you can graveyard, and then you can poison. Yep. And that's what it's all about. He's gonna okay. deliver it, but this counter push is ginormous. Look at the amount of damage you're getting just from the baby dragon. And Heck yeah! Heck yeah! There you go. Oh, that's it! Wow! Yeah, so that, we win that's all the thing about graveyard, match. Yeah. All right, jeez. Yeah, you feel like you're losing the whole match until you win. <laughs> yeah, right? exactly. Like you can make pretty insane comebacks sometimes because, like, you know, he even poisoned that graveyard. But it's just the fact that you, you know, you just played really good defense, and then you finally found your moment to go with the graveyard push, and you didn't yeah. really have a whole lot of elixir or like a lot of different things that you needed to do there. 
Okay, so we're gonna start out with a hog activation here. Uh, was that proper tornado pl placement there? So that was like pretty decent. So with a tor new tornado, you can actually activate and like pull hogs to your king tower without taking any hits. So that's just something that I would focus on. Basically, it's just the same placement you just did, except a little bit quicker. So my dude went super aggressive with that rocket. Should I just graveyard now? Uh, you just don't have the elixir for I it. I do, I do, I do. Yeah, okay, not bad, not bad. <laughs> ah, yeah, damn so it. this is why... This okay, that's why, why I shouldn't uh, have. Yeah, this is why I always say, like, you always want to try and gauge what your opponent might have. Like, generally, that would be a good graveyard, but it's just you never know what your opponent might have. That's why I like to see what kind of deck he's always playing first. Yeah. And Bummer. And, yeah, it's a bummer moment. Yeah, okay. So that's why you shouldn't be too aggressive with graveyard. Got it. Lesson learned. Okay. So here, you just got to use your splash units versus this. Mm-hmm. Should I and maybe have Ice Wiz instead? I don't know. No, I like your Baby Dragon. It's absolutely perfect. Okay. So, in this match, you want to try and use the cage for, uh, hog. for hog. If you can, if you don't, like, if like sometimes you can get awkward cycles, you have to use cage versus print. Yeah, like here I fine. couldn't. Yeah, I didn't have anything. And then, uh, once you get, like, more adept with the deck, you can actually, like, use Cage with other things. And then you can also pull Hogs to your King Tower always with the uh, Tornado without taking any hits. Which is kind of like a secondary, like, kind of the Hog Rider. Okay. So I just keep playing solid defense and then wait for your moment, just like last match. So I don't so know something... if that was, yeah. I don't know if that yeah, was something... dumb, but the reason I did it is because, like, he's also already shown that he wants to rock it, like. Oh, true, true, yeah, that, true, that. Should I graveyard or no? Uh, yeah, I'll probably have to graveyard poison here. Okay, that didn't work out. <laughs> yeah, so... This is a weird deck, man. All right, it's like 2.6 with Prince and Minion Horde. Yeah, I think you just have to, like, try and play same lane. Don't give too much rocket value. And then uh, just go with some, like, pretty aggressive graveyards here with the, uh, with mm -hmm. the rest of this match. Good goblin cage. Okay, this is gonna be. So should I grab it right or left? I mean, I think it's kind of up to you. Okay. Maybe maybe right now since you put yeah. that minion horde. Love that graveyard placement, OP. <laughs> yeah, and then you just have to go yeah. poison. Okay, you're chilling. I suppose here is good. Okay, you're you're starting to get some damage now. Really solid. So he'll probably just keep like arrows and like rocket cycle. I think you just have to get pretty aggressive. Like at this point in yeah. the game, just pretty aggressive with grave bards is going to be key. I'm just trying to focus on stopping these hog riders. Okay, not bad. Hog hopefully doesn't get a hit. He zaps. Ah. Okay, really solid tornado. Honestly, yeah. You I thought I thought he was going to uh, what you call it, scar me there. What could I done differently in that one? I felt like I really oh. played poorly. Okay, so honestly, like, it's just all going to come down to tornado placements in that matchup. All right, guys, into the next one here. Okay, so I have Goblin Cage, Tornado, Poison, and Baby D as a starting hand. So obviously, it's probably going to be Cage, but... Yeah, or, I mean, or, yeah. I would just go with a Goblin Cage in the middle, honestly. I think it's a pretty solid play. It's also very passive. I really like your placement. It's going to pull Hog Raiders from both sides of the map. Okay, thanks, thanks, thanks. Okay, and he does that. So Ice Wiz in the back? Yep, Ice Wizard in the back is definitely a really solid play. And going against Expo most likely here. So against Expo, it's all going to be about... Uh, okay, maybe not. Yeah. Maybe not. Yep. If you have Poison here, you could definitely like, just okay. Poison. 100%. Really solid Poison. Tesla should pop up pretty soon. Well, you logged to prevent the Tesla from popping up. That was cool. Nice. Okay. And then just go ahead and activate King Tower here. Yep. Absolutely not, beautiful. Okay. Not bad at all, not bad at all. So the start of this match is uh pretty Very good. Solid. Yeah. So now I'm gonna be saving the he keeps preemptive preemptive Tesling. I guess I just ice was in the back again. I guess I probably yep. could have uh goblin cage there. But no, I wanna save it now for hog, right? Yeah, exactly. Really good decision so far. Yeah, I think you can just keep playing stuff in the back, let that Tesla kinda of die out. You can go for another poison here, honestly. Like your barb barrel as well. Very solid. Maybe Drake Bader will even splash. 
Yeah, man. Not quite. Okay. Not quite, but it gets to there. And you're just gonna hog, and I'm just gonna cage. Absolutely perfect. Double X are coming soon. So, cage placement probably down one more time. Okay. But you're chilling. Let's get that king turn activated. So now I have, uh, should I just knight in the back here? Yep, absolutely. Just knight back. And then I have ice wizard in hand back. as well. Yeah. And then you can baby dragon. And then you can probably tornado. Maybe even poison and then tornado. Yeah. Oh, a rocket coming in. Didn't expect that. Me neither. But I think I can just do this and pull this back. Yep, absolutely beautiful. Then we can go with the graveyard here for sure. Yeah? Uh, well, not with this hunter. It's gonna kind of block you. I was thinking graveyard would be good, but um, yeah, he played that pretty weirdly. Now you can. Just now I can. Yeah, not, yeah. Yeah. Graveyard this. Yep, hundred percent graveyard here. Oh wow! There's one more tile to the left on the graveyard placement, but no worries. Gotcha. Yeah, the reason why we play one more tile to the left is because it's gonna make the skeleton top, yeah. right top of that tower, and it'll also like. Like, basically get more damage through those poisons, which is so nice. He has Rocket, which I always forget, but I guess that's not a really the big deal. Yeah, I mean, Knight in the back, if they Rocket that one, see, I think it's a big misplay. So I Graveyard? Yeah, you can just keep Graveyard in here. Now it's double Elixir, like, you're gonna have a lot of Elixir to defend. Also, this guy's playing very passively, so, like, you know, it's fine to just keep Graveyard in there. Yeah. Pretty solid cage place, and I'm not sure if it'll stop it to zero hits, but only one hit is fine. Nice. Oh, there you go, perfect. All right, cool. This is uh, not too bad. <laughs> pretty, pretty easy. Like this is kind of like the easy kind of. Yeah, this is the, the easy. Day. Yeah. Like not... sometimes it can be difficult, but. Yeah. I mean, in the end, you just kind of just defend really, really well with all of the really solid defensive units that you have. Yeah. And then you had just keep going with the graveyards, and eventually, yeah. even though he's got the poison, which is kind of the you know standard like hard counter or whatever to graveyard you eventually you will get shipped through the poisons yeah Look at that you barely took any damage in your tower you, the only damage you ever got was a yeah. rocket hey before we let you go because i'm going to practice on this deck obviously between now and the next next week uh for those of you who want to practice along let us know in the comments below if you guys want to too but want to go over all the placements for tornado and goblin cage yeah absolutely i all think right. it's a really good idea <laughs> so i'm gonna just cycle to my tornado i got my tornado in hand okay. go ahead and just go with a uh, a hog rider or okay. skeleton barrel on the screen. There you right go. Now. There you go. So this is by far my very favorite tornado placement. There's you know there's no funny games to it. Just pull it straight to the middle. It's gonna have zero hits for the hog versus hog rider. It's really beneficial because if you have to use the cage on something else, you can do that for hog rider and take zero hits every time. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm gonna send the hog rider. You wanna try it? Uh, I, yeah. Let me get to. Okay. Yep. Send send him in. Okay. I'm sending him in on your right. It doesn't feel like this should be low enough. Yeah, no. one more tile oh. down from that. Okay. I was like, man, dude, that's not. See, what I usually. So, my hands are too fat that I never even see what tile. Like, are you looking at tiles when you're dropping? Or are you not? Like. Um. Because, like. Know. <laughs> my fingers. Two... My mom always says that I, I was made like biologically to play Clash Royale because my thumbs <laughs> are so long and pointy, like <laughs> I can see everything. Man. All right. Usually I just like kind of eyeball it, and I get, obviously I get it right whole, most of the time. But uh, here I'll send you a another. Set, yeah, I'll send you another hog. Go ahead yep. and I know what tile it is, but okay. Yeah, so send it in. It's like basically, basically almost parallel to the tower, to the front of the princess tower. All right, I'm sending it in on your left. Okay, here you go. All right. So that, it, but like, I don't think I'm gonna grab it at that time. Okay. I mean, this is the tile, right? Yeah, that's the tile. All you gotta do. Time uh, it perfectly. You just have to place it when it's about when the hog's about like one tile away from your tower. Okay. Set. I'll send you in one more hog. Okay. Cause I always feel like I'm not gonna get it. Uh. So as you can see, I'm just like kind of placing it pretty early. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, send one oh. more in at me. Send one more. I want to try to get the right. timing correct. Here you go. Okay, still get a so, hit though. Earlier. You're getting there? Yeah, just a little bit earlier. And it's going to look weird. A lot yeah, of times dude. It's work weird. I usually pull my hogs. Like I'm sure my viewers are like, dude, this guy doesn't know how to activate off hog. But I usually go one tile uh, higher or to the right. One tile higher and to the right. So yeah, I, get, I take a hit all the time or to the left i'm sorry so i'll take a hit every time but i always ensure the activation you know all right, right? ready <laughs> yeah i'm ready all right 
Right here. Oh, yeah, I wasn't early enough again. And uh, one more lower than that. Dude, this tile is weird, bro. This tile is okay. weird. Let's just skip this tile. <laughs> <laughs> nah, okay. I'm not going to skip it, man. I want to get this down. Uh, okay, okay. My viewers are probably on the edge of their seat here. This is so exciting. Send it in. All right. Maybe I can get the heal spirit placement here. Oh, no, I can't. There you go, I did it. Finally, it took me forever, but we got it. All right, so that's the tile that we want to... All right, so what one do you want to do next? Just go ahead and send in a giant. And okay, send in so a giant. We're just going to talk about uh, Goblin Cage placements. So this is a 4-3 placement. It's four tiles away from the river, three tiles away from my tower. This is going to work versus giants, royal giants, and golems. But with royal giants, you don't want to use this placement. You always want to play the cage directly on top. But that's just something... Directly uh, on top of the royal giant? Yeah, okay. directly on top, and that's going to make the brawler pop up and yeah. directly you start hitting. Um, so go ahead and just cycle back to your hog rider now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And okay, then, uh, okay yeah. hog, I have my hog. Yeah, go with the hog now. Okay. So versus any hog riders, I like to just place it one more tile to the right. It's a 4-2 placement now. The reason you have to do that is because of the fact that uh, the hog rider's sight range is a little bit, um, a little bit closer because it's faster. Okay. Okay, and then last thing, go ahead and send a skeleton barrel in. Okay, there you go. Uh, so with yeah. that skeleton barrel placement, you can actually use the same exact placement. That's it looks hog. weird, like yeah. when you're placing it down, it's not going to look like it's going to get pulled, but you can actually use the same placement. Now there is a trick. Go ahead and play the same hog rider placement, Ash. Okay. Oh. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, what I was trying to say is, uh, if you if you use the cage uh, like in the same way as uh, you're going to defend a hog rider, and the, your opponent plays the skeleton barrel behind that little chain right there, mm -hmm. it's going to make it so that the skeleton barrel does not get pulled. I understand you there, but when when going back to giant and golem and stuff, I know that some people pull the giant or golem, and some people always play same lane. Uh, what do you prefer? Is it different for each card or? I mean, honestly, it just depends on the situation. If you're going to be playing your cage in a way that like they just go on back and you want to play your first cage down as a kind of like preemptive or maybe like trying to cycle back to a second cage, I always play it same lane. That way, if the cage somehow dies earlier, the brawler can go same lane as a golem. And then um, it also just depends on like the support troops coming behind the beatdown because if there's a lot of support troops coming in behind the beatdown, you want to play same lane so the support troops also get pulled. Okay. Um, that's just an example. But okay. if there's like, you know, like let's say a golem and a baby dragon, obviously baby dragon's not gonna get pulled by the cage no matter what. So I just pull the golem the optimal optimal de distance and then take care of the baby dragon separately. Okay, man. Well sounds good. Thank you for the tips on the uh the placements. It's definitely helpful as you can see that I did not know them in the the hog one. So uh well I really appreciate it, Juicy. As always, uh we'll practice this deck. What is what is our homework today, this week? All right, your guys' homework right now is to focus on learning these uh, Goblin Cage placements and your Tornado placements. I want you guys to play at least 20 games with the deck okay. and, uh, you know, really kind of focus on that. And it's going to look weird at first. Like, a lot of the times when something's coming at you, you're, you're not going to trust yourself. You're not going to trust the game or the interactions. You're going to want to place your cage way too far to the left, right next to your tower, or uh, you're not going to trust, like, your Tornado. Um, but, you know, I would want you guys to experiment with these Tornado and Goblin Cage placements and try and be the most often that you can in those 20 games. All right. Sounds good, man. I'm going to play more than 20 games. I'm really interested to see what my win rate is going to be after after these uh, this this next week. So, uh, guys, go ahead and stay tuned to the Deck Mastery series. We'll be back at you again next week. We record on Fridays, so usually release like Saturday or Sunday. Uh, thanks again, Juicy, for coming on, man. Appreciate it. Anytime, Ash. Go ahead and check out Juicy J's player stats and profile links to statsforl.com, his YouTube channel, his Twitter information, and his coaching, where you can book him to be your very own private coach and get better at Clash Royale, hopefully way better than I am as well. So uh, give Juicy some love, guys, and uh, let me know if you enjoyed the series. Let me, let us know what deck you want to see next. As always, a huge shout-out to Geyser and Brenchong and Statsforl, my channel partners here. And as always, take care, guys. Bye.